Hi guys, welcome back to part two of the um, history of the British military uniforms and um, I'll just get started. So, last episode we were looking at the pattern 1871 and 88 equipment slash uniform. This one, we'll continue with that and talk about the more recognisable pattern of the pattern 1899 Boer War equipment. Uh, still for the pith element and now it's got more more of that that kind of that that 1800s military look of them it was still in <coughs> pardon, still in the um, service kind of gray sand color uh, with white webbing and straps but there's a less there's less to it really um, and now by this time you know they had adopted a new water bottle 1895 uh, patent and the new rifle which is more famously Lee Enfield Mark I, was there again, docked in 1895. And just like the Lee Metford earlier, it was still, um, still, <coughs> still single loading. You know, there was no none of these clips or fancy stuff which was people doing. You know, none of these magazine stuff the French had been doing. 10 years earlier or something but still it was still single loading you know so there's none of so there's none of this so forget that it's just single loading like like the old martini henry was um but yeah so the only difference of this and the uh pardon me <coughs> again the only difference with the 1899 pattern the, to the 88 pattern is because um you see those i'll get my pointer yeah, you see those um, ammo pouches. Yeah, what happens is, is if the guy's lying down on the ground um, and the ammo pouches fall o fall open, um, the ammo won't fall out as much, as easily. You know, on the ground and you'll fumble around. It won't because they've angled it as well. So the actual um, um, pouch um, cover opens that away. So you know, if the bullets are like that, all they're going to do is open up and fold onto uh, that um, on the cover so it's very you know it's simpler simpler and easier and I said still the pith helmet still in that traditional uh, British age and at this time I've gone 1899 start well October 12th 1899 start of the second Anglo ball the official ball I like to call it and yeah and they were you know the balls were challenging you know with their commando tactics Again, the British to the balls were challenging as well, because of their new firepower, new rates of fire. Um, and yeah, it served the British all the way up until when they officially uh, changed to khaki in 1902. That was satin coloured khaki. Now khaki actually does mean satin coloured um, uniform, khaki. And that's what we're going to talk about next. So, from 1899 all the way to 1902, which was the 1902 slash 1903 equipment slash uniform which mainly refers to the um the, the actual webbing the actual uniform because they changed from white um kind of style to brown leather with this the 1902 slash 03 um patent of uh uniform as you see it's khaki um mainly khaki with different with they've gone back to the more of the oblongy type water bottle in blue brown leather and at this time they were still using, not the pith helmet, because that had changed, they are using a cloth cap. Pardon me, just a standard cloth cap. Um, and a new bayonet as well. The pattern 1903 uh, transitional bayonet is called. <coughs> so, um, with this the bandoliers um, were more in the more modern way of, as I said, back in back in those times they didn't have any clips back in the, you know, the 18, 80s, 1890s, no clips, single loading 1902-1903 brought about um, the more 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 modern SMLE Lee Enfield Mark I and that came with it charger loading you know, with a clip put it on there, thumb your rounds in and that's what those van Lewis were for the clips as well. And now, 
that's it really to talk about it as at the moment uh, just to say that um, what the unit the guy who was wearing this was a sergeant and was in the uh, what looks like the Grandier Guards or could be Royal Fusiliers I'm going to say Royal Fusiliers um, yeah just new rifle you know SMLE short magazine leader. there's a I'll tell you uh, why the SMLE change from the standard Mark 1 when you, why the uh, Mark, Mark 1 the infield changed to the SMLE I'll tell you that's another story it takes a while uh, so yeah 1902-1903 pattern with new rifle, new webbing, uh, new webbing, brown leather and khaki uniform. So then, uh, the British Army was thinking about this more seriously, you know, more kind of camouflage. When the khaki came into it, it was camouflaged. So, the more noticeable pattern 1907 uh, webbing. And still, if you forget the Brodie helmet up the top here, there was still the early years of 1914 and early years of 1915 still using um, the cloth cap. But essentially what you have here, you've got the more easy accessible um, pouches there. They would carry uh, 10 in each, so five, so one clip that side, one clip that side. And as you can see, it's more green instead of the white or brown leather. And again, um, still clip loading because at that time they had the introduced the um, SMLE Leonfield Mark III pattern, well Mark III. And this is how kind of um, they work. So this is a 1942, uh, is it 42? Um, 42, yeah, 42 Second World War um, magazine pouch, uh, um, you know. Um, so, but this is just worked the same way. So how you get it, is you open the pouch up, you'll get your ammunition, and then you shove it in like so. And that's, oh, sorry. And, yeah, and that is how it would work and then of course you clip it and you know there will be one there will be one um, at the back there so you can just about see and that's how they would work yeah so that's the 1907 patent um, new rifle new more modern style as you can you know technically see and the guy who's wearing this was a lance corporal because of one stripe um, so yeah as you can see, it's kind of getting more easier to accessible. Um, then, after the First World War, that was used in several different um, designs, right through um, to the 1920s. In 1922, they came out with a new tunic, just the tunic. As you can see, if I can actually get a piece of paper. Get there. Is this, the 1922 tunic, which will be uh, more apparent during the Second World War. Um, and that's all really I have to say. The belt changed, everything else, uh, everything else had changed. Yeah, just the 1922 pattern of tunic. So then, when we then that's when we come to the final one, the pattern 1937. And now this, you can tell the magazine is to the magazines have totally, but well, totally changed because it has, you know, over simplified, 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 so, but I mean, uh, over overly done and more far more simple with the webbing. Now, yeah, and the belt buckle has changed uh, a little bit. I mean, it changed in the 19... Um, it changed in the... Um, when did it change? It changed in the... It changed in the uh, pattern 1903 equipment because of not just the belt buckle telling you what if, what regiment you're from. It kind of just goes to that normal clip style. Um, so, yeah, now the one major difference is the... Um, magazine pouches so what they did here is use them simple, simple, simply because they brought back the bandoliers so bandoliers would be there with spare magazine magazines well there will be spare magazines but spare clips you know in there, bandolier with the clips in there, strung around there, and here you have two bring gun magazines. Now, what you'll do is because it will military change and everything, so what you do is um, fit the two bring gun magazines loaded in there and then give them to the
the brain gun section person who carries the magazine for the brain gun. That's it. So uh, I'm going to wrap up this video. See you guys. And bye. Oh, yeah, I had another little uh, quick thing which I've just forgotten to tell you. Um, <coughs> is with the with the guy you hold it because everybody would have every infantryman during the Second World War will have these magazine pouches. You know, I mean, when I talked about these being Second World War 1942, they are. But these were only really issued out to machine gun groups and you know not really big infantry soldiers. You know, like that. So you know, these go and spare would be given to um, machine gun troops. Um, so basically, everybody who had these lot, of course, I said two loaded Bren gun magazines in that one. Everybody would, everybody in the whole section squad regiment would be trained on how to use the Bren gun. That that's why, just in case, if you know the Bren gun, you know the section, all those men die, you know, get killed or wounded. Um, a guy to you know say this guy would be going over there with his magazines and loading the brink on using it um so yeah that has been a little quick video well not a little quick video two part of you on the um british unif history of the british infantry uniform since um 1871, so that would be used in the Anglo-Zulu uh, Zulu War period, all the way up into, right through the Sudanese um, period, right through up until, you know, again Egypt as well, uh, up until 1888, and yeah, all the way up until about 1937 where they had the new, you know, Second World War type equipment, of course they had 1937 webbing equipment. And also, when they had, uh, also again after that, just a little thing, I don't have a, any, any um, photo of it, but still they had another pattern of uniform in 1946, so, oh, so kind of post Second World War as well, um, which was more 1950. You know, 60s, that type. So yeah. Um, So you kind of gone right through from the traditional uniform, uh, red uniform tunic, all the way through to um, brown, then into the more of the khaki, more noticeable stage. So, see you guys. Thanks for watching, and.